Welcome to the North and Data's Conversation. My name is Mark Kelly, um, and in the chair of Invisibility uh, is normally my co-host, uh, Andrew McKenzie. Um, these podcasts will be coming out uh, in October, possibly November, um, so Andrew will theoretically be back on deck then. Uh, Andrew, uh, it's great to have you back. Um, today's guest, uh, Tama Himara. Um, man, 27 years old and such a cool conversation uh honestly just really really cool just listening to his journey through music because he's a muso um and me not having an understanding of genre at all really it just seemed like it was one of those things where i didn't have a clue what the hell he was talking about um but you know those are always the more interesting conversations um he talks about um his mum being a muso and then kind of him being around that as a kid uh he talks about um going and doing music in high school through to where he is now and having performed with um some international musician was well, first international musician as well it was a gig that was held uh, in august at butter factory um unreal i mean he's just he, he's he's so cool and he considers himself to be you know if normal's here he's kind of over here somewhere um but you know he was um once he got started uh he was just super cool to just talk with and a lot of laughs uh, a lot of fun um and i learned a lot as well i learned heaps um of through this conversation um in terms of like music genres and new artists um and all of that sort of good stuff so um i hope you do stick around um it's absolutely amazing um thank you so much if you're watching us on youtube um remember to like share and subscribe um that's amazing um if you've found it through facebook please feel free to leave a comment um and without further ado let's have a conversation with tama Hemara. Tia Hamada. Yes. Also known as Tama, yep. for short. Tama, yep. Great brand of drums, by the way, as well. <laughs> very, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, look, thank you so much for coming into the um, Five Elements Media Studio. Well, good. It's a uh, to sit down with us for the North and Artist Conversation. Um, it's kind of one of those really cool things. I believe you might be our youngest artist thus far, Ooh. which is very cool. Okay. It's very cool. Um, so obviously we talked beforehand it's kind of one of the things we do we invite guests and in, they come and sit down and um, just have an opportunity just to chat um, I like this idea because as you said you're sort of a bit more focused on your music journey now mm. so we get to hear where you're at and then when we get you back on a year two three years later we can sort of go back and reflect mm. and go yeah. well you know three years ago you said you were going to do blah 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 blah. <laughs> have you done blah 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 blah? you'd be like no i've entered the world of country and western um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i'm now writing poems exactly in, exactly in a beach in italy mm. god could be worse <laughs> things at the moment um now yours is um a pretty cool story mm. um you're a musician you do electronic music production okay yep. in genres um, i say yes because it might be yeah. plural so genres um my main genre is electronic r&b right um okay. but i delve into more darker electronic stuff um there's a style called halftime which is drum and bass if you've heard of drum and bass i absolutely like, love yeah, drum and bass pendulum a drum yeah, and bass exactly yeah love pendulum so, um, halftime is the sister of it and it's basically just drum and bass but half the speed okay right um and it has a lot of hip-hop influence in it right so, so if you listen to it it's very hip-hop heavy mm -hmm. real bass heavy yeah um and that's kind of like the style that i've like melded into nice um but then <laughs> i got this other side of me where i fuse the two together yeah so yeah yeah, um, yeah I okay grab, i grab my r&b electronic like, mm -hmm. softer influence side and then i just pound it with the heavy bass stuff 
Right. And that's where my recent singles have been going. Cool. In that direction. When you yeah. said that there was another genre, I was expecting you to go, <laughs> and for a surprise, I do K-pop. <laughs> um, I'd have been like, that is really cool. Yeah. Um, now, your your mum's also a muso as well. And yes. we were just talking about that, and I've heard her name. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing she's going to be one yeah. of the reasons you got into yeah. music yeah. and music production. For sure, for sure. Um, what was it like growing up around that? Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> it was very, it was it was sick because um, I got to, you know, I was real young and I was going to um, bars and stuff where she'd play. And, you know, because um, like more traditional music, like um, bands and cover bands and stuff that was yep, yep. really in you know, a few years ago when I was yeah, that, that age yep. um, and so like um, just being in the environment um, you know I learned how to like set up gear and like um, all the background stuff and yeah you, know, you do all the back line yeah eh? and then yeah. you know at, at school at the time I was learning how to play drums and like nice and so that's kind of where the passion started you know yep. in high school and then in the weekends um, you know mum would take me along to some gigs now and then and i think my favorite memories are definitely like the um like the family dues and like oh the the, 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 the big private, gatherings yeah the yeah family. yeah, and yeah. Then they all the you know because like music's been a big thing in my mom's side my mom's family is yeah you know, very musical cool um, and so like we'd have you know birthday parties and all the gear would be there and, yeah you know, i'd be a little kid just go in there have a yeah, jam you know yeah, and like nice they'd let me you know let me play and stuff and then yeah i think um i realized that i had like a knack for it because okay. drumming like you know i was real young but i was able to play pretty proficiently for my age yeah and i think yep. that's kind of where i was like wait i could like really look at doing music you yeah know? like it getting w- into it i i played drums when i was in high school as well mm. um because i was a shit singer yep. i loved singing but i was shit at it um but i loved <laughs> drumming and i loved uh being able to hold down a rhythm yeah Yep. you know create the groove that, that yeah. people can move to yeah make people's bodies move yeah, yeah. absolutely um, did you have any sort of interest in music before high school or was it more you sort of um, hit high school start doing some cool stuff and then yeah I think like de- yeah definitely just growing up around music you yep. know mum's always singing and like at home you know rehearsals they'd come home yeah. over home you know yeah like a lot of that time was mm-hmm. i was around surrounded by that yep. from a young young age nice um, but i think it was like yeah in the the high school i really wanted to like explore music yeah you know yeah. and be more like uh, what's the word just be expressive like yeah you know yeah um that's kind of where the passion for it came from and yeah. you kind of started on the drums? Yep, started on the drums. Right, um, good foundation. Yeah, and then, so I was like getting bored of the drums <laughs> after a while. Well, you know, I, you're well, not, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not, yeah, yeah. Your, <laughs> yeah. your drummers are kind of tucked behind <laughs> yeah. the other musicians and there's a lot of drummers yeah. that secretly want to be front men. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, and then I gave, I went to the bass guitar. Oh, yes. Um, Again, which, rhythm orientated. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. So, just the rhythm backline was yeah. my thing um i really really loved just different rhythms i love i especially loved funk and learning how to like slap and stuff like that was like you who, know. Are you, who are your early funk influences um oh i think there was uh i listened to a lot of um maxwell um obviously like earth wind and fire and stuff i was like yeah i was gonna too. say yeah. sly and family yeah. stone earth wind like, and fire um, yeah and then like more modern um stuff just started there's a there's a trio band which i really really love um which oh maybe you might have heard of they're called dirty loops have you heard of Dirty? Dirty i i have i have not heard it's a three piece three piece band there are three session musicians okay yep um they studied together at this university in in sweden Mm -hmm. and oh wow they came together created this band and their music is like fusion jazz funk it's like oh wow incredible stuff um but the bass player for the band his name is hendrick um oh, i forget his last name hendrick um he's like he plays like the six string bass and it's like the oh, yeah. craziest thing and i just used to just sit and watch him play like on youtube just yeah 
study them. Now, you're of that generation that has YouTube and social yeah, media yeah. and all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a bit different for someone <laughs> who's tw- essentially 20 years older than you. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you find those tools? <clears throat> oh, um, like are they, are they helpful in your journey? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I feel like it's definitely like accelerated um, like rate of learning and stuff. Right, Especially when right. it's like especially coming from my background where you're just like i'm just learning as i'm going yeah like, yeah um, i'm just doing it as i'm going and you know making mistakes as i'm going and then just figuring stuff out as yep. i'm going yeah, you know yeah. it's not like i i you know I don't have any like formal background in music and stuff so it's all very just experimenting and you know putting my head against the creative wall like yeah, you know yeah, that's yeah. just how i've been like i'm just dedicated you Do, know, in that way i so i mean i i kind i'm kind of in that that sort of generation where there's you know i mean i, I was born in 75 and you had um you know a lot of musicians who are technically competent mm. and they had like a really good understanding of music and theory and all of that sort of stuff yep. um then you had the likes of guys like eric clapton who had never done any music theory but were just amazing and then you nowadays you kind of have a lot of people with, that will create music that don't have a lot of the fundamentals but they make based on feel mm, yeah do you yep. sort of find that you sit more <clears throat> in the feel category yep, definitely yeah, definitely nice. yeah a lot of the stuff i've made is just just feeling it out hearing it out you know like listening for different frequencies that i really like and just staying in them oh so you're the yeah. find a vibe yeah find a vibe and just write it write out, it out. Yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. man that's how i love working like that's how i love making music. yeah i'm very much the same as well you just yeah you feel a vibe and you go how long can we just go with this <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you know oh that's really cool man yeah yeah um when you're so, okay so you're in high school mm. you've gone from drums to bass yep. um when do you start moving to digital okay so pretty much just after high school um well actually in high, like my last two years of high school yep um, i was in a high school band and we started getting into songwriting and i started liking um learning how to like um you know structure songs and the craft yeah and then yeah. starting like actually like writing mm-hmm. music like writing lyrics um that was really like a cool thing because i had a friend who was a really good singer and um she used to write all our songs in the band right but i got curious i was like how like how do you come up with this you know yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know just asking questions and then eventually i got into that um and then outside of high school like mm-hmm. a few years later yeah then i really started to dive into it and um yeah i just had like um a laptop and i was i'd just come home from work and just you know open it up fresh canvas just yeah write whatever i was feeling um put a lot of like yeah all my emotions what i was feeling like that was just my main outlet right was music and i'd just make whatever i felt like at the time and it would always just translate into something that i never expected right right yeah um, yeah yeah. and that was just always been my like creative flow it's just like it's very linear like it's i start with one thing and then it just gradually builds and yeah. it just comes out into something and it's like whoa i didn't, Did, expect, didn't that. expect that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so um and then like over the years it just slowly condensed and refined um and then now i'm like just making stuff that i like <laughs> five year ago me would be like what the you yeah, know? yeah so yeah it's like yeah. that type of thing yeah like it's just a constant evolution yeah um i mean i'm the same i look at lyrics from when i was in my 20s yep yeah. and i go wow they were cheesy as shit <laughs> and um for me i, I always I was like a lot of artists. I was always like, I had to rhyme and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then when I was doing my band thing, I kind of realized, well, why do lyrics have to rhyme? I discovered Pearl. I, I'd always known of Pearl Jam. I'd been a huge fan, but I'd re- kind of rediscovered their lead singer, Eddie Vedder. Mm. And he traditionally doesn't write lyrics that rhyme. He yeah. will write a 
like a sentence that's descriptive and, and evokes certain emotions and memories and, mm. and you can kind of feel it in your head. Um, are you a, a rhymer or a freestyler? More, more. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get that wrong. Freestyle is probably not the right word. Andrew, <laughs> I'm going to stare straight down the camera. Camera, Andrew, I apologise in advance for using the word freestyler, but carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I'd say, I'd, I'd say when I first started, it was definitely more free. Yeah. But now I've sort of come into um, a style where. I start rhyming but it's not like generic rhymes like i yeah, use sure. words that sound like they're not like and you can kind of yeah you can rhyme them via syllables and yeah yeah stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah yeah okay which uh like i'm not that proficient in like right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's just not, like not m M&M with orange yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's just like um i'm just kind of like yeah i'm very mindful with it you know just try and be more mindful with my message and stuff yeah when take take me back to to early twenties. Okay, you're you've finished high school. Yeah, you you passed. I'm guessing. Yep. 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 You decide. You know what? I'm not going to go to university. No. no, I'm just going to go straight into the workforce. Yep. Um, and as you said, you would you'd go to work, you'd come home, and just devote your time to music. Yep. How 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 disciplined do you need to be to go right i've just worked an eight and a half hour day i'm now going to come down and sit my ass in front of a computer for two three four five hours and i'm going to create how disciplined do you need to be yeah um i'd say pretty disciplined um i was very brash with it i would say that Um, oh brash like, like so yeah like my sessions were unhealthy um especially on my weekends like i'll just dedicate literally my entire weekends just working on music and it was like because i you know i was working full-time yep and creating on the side Mm -hmm. um just going like full steam ahead parallel right um and it it took a huge toll on my mental health yep and it was like at the time I thought I was doing good, but but really looking back on it now, <laughs> yeah, looking probably back, not so much. Looking back on it now, it's L- like a mm, little bit obsessive, yeah, yeah, a little bit too much, like yeah, yeah a bit too, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit. Um, but I really found my limits, and I learned to, um, you know, balance it a bit more. Yeah. Um, recently, so, um, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Um, doing it like that way because now i've got the skills in here Mm -hmm. yeah that if i didn't dedicate all those hours um yeah i probably wouldn't be anywhere near you know yeah right where i want where i want you know where i set out where you are now yeah yeah Yeah. so i'm kind of like yeah i'm kind of grateful that i I dedicate all that time um but yeah it does take a lot like it's very yeah it's very like you have to be comfortable with it yeah if you really want to take it and you know i I imagine it's quite hard because you know if you're working a full-time job (laughs) and then you're pretty much dedicating everything else to music where's the balance of friends and family and you know where does all of that like you know yeah i mean i remember when i was actually i probably would have been around a similar age and i remember working a full-time job i'd play squash twice a day Mm -hmm. Uh, i'd come home and then i would I'd either do a play or I'd do theatre sports or I'd write a short film mm. um, and I had no friends and no life. Yeah. Um, it was probably the most creative time of my entire life. I look yeah. back on it now and go, oh, it's pretty much Mark No Mates. Yeah, yeah. How did you learn to figure out that balance? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so when I was in that slump, um, you know, literally like isolated myself from everyone anything um and i there was um okay i'll tell you about this this right here yes it says basement basement and, yeah okay and basement is that a label yeah and is basement, that your label no 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 basement is a community okay of underground electronic producers djs mm-hmm. all of it all in one hub and it's based in auckland and 
they host these shows and they're called <clears throat> they're just called basement um like just basement shows right yeah but they have um a segment at the start of it called a basement beat session and it's basically like um a parsley orcs for bedroom producers so right. producers go yep. yep we go to a club mm -hmm. they have the sound system and we go around we, you write your name down um and you get to play a minute of a track you've worked on um cool. on a proper club sound system yep yep to a live crowd um and so i think the first one i went to was in 2000 and ooh, 2016 okay um so yeah, about six, it, six, six 16, years ago 17, 2017 because yep. it was founded in 2014 okay so it's, it's right. pretty fresh um, yep. basement um and so i went to i went to the gig i met um a friend which is a really really good friend of mine now um and basically he like introduced me to pretty much like everyone that he knew there yeah um and <clears throat> I, <laughs> I i sat down played my beat and then i was like super awkward because you know just <laughs> have no zero social skills yeah, like yeah i'm just a little like yeah real nerd well, like, you, you've just, been yeah, yeah. you've been I, mr yeah. isolated yeah, mr. for so long yeah mr <laughs> mr by myself forever yeah. yeah so um yeah and then just walking into this environment where people are like appreciating your music in front of you and it's like oh like like what do you do with this like it's, and i think that just like started it i think from there i realized that i wanted to i really wanted to work on like my social skills and yeah yeah networking and meeting other like minds and um so they hosted these gigs usually um every like three to six months um and then obviously when covid came um they had to stop for like a year and a bit and then um in 2000 last year yeah um they started them up again and so nice. i kept going i went i've been to i've missed one there's been about five so far yep and i've missed one i've missed one since um one yep just, wow just one so i i traveled down to auckland yeah um go and hang out with my mates uh, meet some new people i've met, met new people pretty much at everyone yeah so is um, it like a weekend event type thing well yeah usually um <laughs> they'll plan Excuse it me. so that it's um on a friday or saturday okay yep just the one night um but i would spend the weekend there and yeah just, yeah like, you know yeah, hang out with mates well, it's stuff. awkward <laughs> yeah yeah um and i think it, it was it was cool because the connections i made there they definitely like gave me a sense of like what's the word belonging like i found people who there you go yep yeah resonated with me yep. like my brain yeah you know been so, like so isolated for so long and yeah. then just meeting these people who, who are the same yep. like we're just we're just dudes who you know <laughs> make music oh and, and females obviously there's really good female producers yes electronic music producers um and yeah like just meeting them has been like literally life-changing like it's it's so sick and every time i go down um i just feel like more like i you know i meet more people and then everyone kind of like learns about me more and then it's just yeah. been like a gradual thing over the years um and then yeah that's just been like um yeah like that's how i kind of come out of where i was um and yeah The Northern Artist Conversation is proud to support Te Kōwhai Print Trust. Uh, Te Kōwhai Print Trust are an amazing organisation that are located on Selwyn Ave uh, in Whangarei. Um, Te Kōwhai Print Trust do such amazing things as being a workshop and educational facility in fine art printmaking, as well as keeping a nationally significant historical art archive of fine art prints. These guys are absolutely amazing. I had a chance to meet up with them um, last year, and the work they do is so incredibly cool. It's just amazing the, the types of things you can do from like screen printing to lithography. Um, absolutely unreal, and it's so much fun as well. So uh, 
North and Artist Conversation are incredibly proud to support Te Kōwhai Print Trust. So, Basement for You has essentially been a way for you to find yourself, figure out who you are, figure yeah. out your place in the music scene, yeah. I guess. Yeah, After sure, having been sure. so insular and isolated for such a, you know, a, a period of time to suddenly go, right, well, I need to I need to talk to people now. I can't just go <laughs> check out my shit. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah yeah i need to go and say hello to someone you do, you do. <laughs> yeah yeah it's healthy for you yeah. it is yeah so yeah so based on is definitely like a big part of um my journey and um just yeah just the connections like you know i've met some amazing amazing artists like yeah people yeah. who inspire me and who yeah. <laughs> who 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 are those artists that inspire you i think it's always like it's always one of the questions I ask yeah. people is like, who is your inspiration? Not just the guys from guys and gals from Basement, but who in general? Oh, it's kind of been okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, um, mum. Yeah, obviously, mum. Yep. Um, there's some very niche um, elect- uh, electronic R&B artists which yes. I've ever since I found their music, it's just like everything they bring out. It's just I'm on it. You know? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Pff- first person listening to yep. it like you know that game type changing yeah, type yeah. stuff yeah yeah and like everything that they make is like just it resonates with me so so deeply and like um that one artist there's one artist that i just love everything he makes his name is gali matthias which yep <laughs> right there down that's down, uh <laughs> gali matthias yeah gali uh, matthias. he's a, a danish person living in the u.s yep, yep right yep, yep, yep. so he predominantly makes r&b hip-hop okay um with an electronic taste i guess right yep um yeah his debut ep called urban flora with a um vocalist her name is alina barras okay um it went like triple platinum like wow actually just one of the most beautiful records created like in, in my opinion okay yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah 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 um if you li- if you get a chance to listen to it and if you i know some people may know but know of it um it's very like niche but it still kind of blew up and you know yep uh editor rocky will will put gala matthias yeah, somewhere yeah. Just yep. around there <laughs> yeah. that's rocky's nodding his head thanks editor rocky <laughs> yep um, um who else so gala matthias um and then there's a duo okay called cohen sound k-o-a-n okay it's sound yeah and they make um okay th- hard to explain what they make they make um a fusion of stuff um it's called like they call it idm which is like intelligent dance music so basically it's like super intricate okay electronic music um you know the techniques that they make is like the techniques that they use to make the music is very like just it's all very technically uh, yeah, minded it's super technical it's one uh, um I'll, I'll see if i can put it into uh rock and metal terms yeah. progressive music which is very complex and technical and for yeah. people that have a real appreciation of the musicianship and the quality behind it yeah, more of the artistic side of right music. there yeah. we go yeah so definitely more attracted to the more artistic side of electronic music yeah um but yeah common sound they they were like the pioneers of the style of um bass design which is called neuro and it's like um how do I so it's like super processed bass sounds okay like extremely over the top um but then controlled in a controlled way okay so when you listen to it if you ever listen to it it's, it's just kind of like uh, like how do you understand it but um yeah like like it's it's very hard to understand if you're not if you haven't been really exposed to it um so it's very like i've gone down this rabbit hole yes to like point of no return kind of thing yep. right yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah so it's kind sound they make yeah like idm stuff um with they have influences of like uk garage um like oh they're based they were based in the uk um they make stuff like 
hip hop influence, like the halftime stuff that I make. Yes. That's where it influenced from them. Okay. Um, they also make like more delicate ambient stuff with like piano and all this other cool, interesting glitch stuff. Um, and yeah, and so they're like another artist that everything new that they make is just like okay. I just, just love it. You've got yeah. to get across it. I just got to listen to it straight yeah, away, yeah. you know? Yeah, it just inspires me in like in totally different ways. And yeah. As, as some, I'm, oh God, I'm, I hate to say this, I'm going to sound. So I, I like to think of myself as musically diverse. Yeah. Um, as much as a 47 year old white male <laughs> can be. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, for me, I remember R&B as smooth grooves like mm. um craig david yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, black street yeah, yeah all those guys and then dance music i associate like um i, I guess i kind of fell into the you know it's you've got the 70s disco mm. which i associate like uh jackson five yeah. um but then i also go I, I was kind of around when dubstep was huge yeah, yeah. pendulum yeah Nero, yeah, Skrillex. Skrillex, yeah, yeah, Skrillex. Um, yeah. Taking, I, I, in my head, I, I, I sort of can't hear, yeah, Skrillex and Craig David coming together. Yeah, coming <laughs> together and, and yeah, make music. Yeah. I mean, how? Yeah. So that's like, yeah, that's one thing that um, I'd say, I'd say Cohen sound are. Uh, kind of like the pioneers of they brought in the jazz side of things okay into their productions um because originally back in the day when skrillex was popping off yes cohen sound were actually on osla which is the um the label that skrillex started oh right yeah so okay. they were like yep. um they were around that era yeah but um very like underground so they were never really discovered and they still are kind of very okay. like low key right but their music is like innovative and it's so like they're just pulling things like left right and center yep. and putting it into something okay and that's what inspires me the most is the more innovative side of it's, it's, stuff it's genre yeah, grabbing right? exactly yeah yeah You're and like then going why can't i sample this beat with this beat <laughs> yeah, from yeah, these yeah, yeah. three or four different genres right yeah, for sure for yeah. sure yeah and so that's kind of because you know like when i create music that's my mindset is yep. like i just want to like pull everything i love put it together smash it yeah. it's just that's just like my chaos is like that's how i express myself like it's just i put it all together um okay so yeah, so let me ask you a question yep your the style of music you said is dark r&b is that mm. <laughs> yeah i guess you could say yeah yeah dark r &B, is, yeah. is that what it is <laughs> it's it's uh, or half time so half time is one one side of it yeah and then there's like electronic r&b Ele okay. electronic r&b yeah if as someone who is uh i won't say uncultured <laughs> or uneducated um as someone who has not discovered the ways of electronic <laughs> r&b yeah. and was to listen to something for the first time yeah give me three songs that would be mm. a really good a gateway, gateway. i guess okay. yeah Ooh. Um, i'm gonna really put you on the spot here okay 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 so um definitely a song from gally matthias gally, um, gally matthias yep yeah. so i think i think one of his most recent songs one of my favorite songs by him is called self self by gally matthias self by gally matthias yep, okay self. cool we're gonna go with that one first so it's okay, one, first. one song okay yep. so um and then another song hmm. because I'll, I'll i'll talk while you have a bit of a think about it yeah yeah, yeah. um I, I think the reason being is um you know much like with metal and rock there's so many different subcategories and yeah. sub genres yeah. i mean i last year i discovered clown metal which is dudes driving around in what looked like a um you know the old mr whippy ice cream truck and they're in clown masks and they they play with gazoos and all the weird obscure shit that you'd associate clowns to do but so electronic r&b 
it sort of to me seems like it's very niche yeah. from yeah. I, I guess well it's, it's almost like a hybrid of two genres together right yeah pretty much so say, right? what would my second song be mm. I'm diving on YouTube yep. I've had a listen to Gala Matias, and I've gone oh this isn't too bad the second song I'm going to search for is <laughs> oh blank um, drum roll please hmm. would it be would it be cone sound cohen cohen um, cohen, cohen, cohen sound? sound cohen sound no, no, no they, they don't really do r&b okay um this sort of a little bit more more, more jazzy more tangential off yeah, to the side yeah, yeah. yep okay um, are there any other other sort of really cool electronic r and B? Let me think, let me think. Um, I know I can see you feverishly scrambling through the different <laughs> artists going, oh, shit, he's honestly, really bro. put me on the spot. <laughs> honestly, bro, Oh my man. God, this is like, I wasn't expecting this question. I'm going to have a freak okay, out. Yeah. You know what, let's just stick with Galamatias for now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what was the song? Self. Self. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I'm guessing there's a is there a video for it on YouTube? No, no. But, how do, how well, there is this. There is like you know, like oh, the visual yeah, 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 okay, but right. not like an actual music video. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Galamantius self. Yep. Let's you know. Well, I will check that out afterwards. One hundred percent. Um, what what is it about him specifically? Um, okay. Like you've you've talked about how he just <clears throat> grabs things and makes them work. Mm. But is it? I'm sure there are a whole bunch of other. Oh God! Uh, sound is it? I'm going to look at editor Rocky. SoundCloud is SoundCloud still a thing? Yeah, is it still a thing? <laughs> SoundCloud artists. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure there are other SoundCloud artists out there, there that is, do some kind is, of crazy is. hybrid mishmash, Mr. Bungle style bullshit. <laughs> I, you don't yeah. not know who Mr. Bungle is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Oh. Can I use my phone? You can. You can, man. You, this is your podcast. You can do whatever the hell you want. Honestly, bro, I'm, I'm actually blank. Drawing a blank. He's just got to move the microphone closer to his face oh. again. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Let me just pull my playlist up real quick. Oh, have you got uh, an actual playlist as well? Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, another artist. Yes. It's called KLRX. K L R X. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this guy is. This is the second band. Yep. This is a second artist. Producer. Yep. Producer. <coughs> right. Producer, yep. yep. Um. So this guy is from the US as well, mm-hmm. and he makes like more <coughs> more on the trappy side of R and B, electronic R and B. Trap. Trap. Yep. Okay. So right. he pulls influences from that, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously ambient. Um, and he kind of melds that together. Okay, yeah. I, I think the only trap artist I may know of is Camo and Crooked. Oh, they make drum and bass. Yeah, are they drum and bass? Yeah, yeah. Oh god damn, it. I don't know any <laughs> trap thing. Okay, right. Um, trap so, again. Oh, it's yeah. all these subgenres. Trap. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, sorry, I should mention that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Subgenres are just like yeah, I don't really deal with them. I just, I just like you listen music. to it. Yeah, yeah. I just now ambient. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I think of ambient. Oh, I'm going to once like... again. I'm going to once again show my age. I think of Enigma. I think okay. of Enya. Yeah. I think of uh, Clannad. <laughs> just re- hey, hey, hey! No one just Clannad. I mean, they were great. <laughs> Harry's song is amazing. I was about to drop the f bomb there, but man, I loved Clannad. I rediscovered them again a few years ago. Is that is that what ambient is like? Where it's all sort of beautiful swirling melodies and yep. okay, yep. right. Very so I'm much. not yep. too far off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. It really showing my age right about now <laughs> the viewers and listeners this no, is terrible good. you just <laughs> i'm looking at it going you see the gray in the beard it's because i'm 47 right okay and have you have you found a third artist um no hold on no we're gonna go back to the phone yeah, back to the phone and that's what i love is i'm i'm sitting here with paper and he's diving into his phone <laughs> and editor rocky's trying not to piss himself with laughter going this <laughs> interview is completely off the rails <laughs> oh, no. rocky you're editing this one as well and he's going right lots of wide shots then <laughs> <laughs> all right um 
Ooh. Oh no. This is actually no, it's no pressure. About this. No pressure at all. You are all good. Um It's all good. And I think the cool thing is is like you you oh, know, yeah. people of yourself or, or younger, they can definitely um you know, teach people of my generation and older a bit of a lesson because mm-hmm. you know we were obviously brought up in very sort of tight genres yeah you know i mean you know growing up it was duran duran and aha mm. you know mum and dad would have friends over and they'd have a party and those friends would bring michael jackson's thriller yep. so i had all pop growing up my first my first favorite band i ever had was um aha uh-huh. but then my my two favorite bands of all time are duran duran yep. incredibly synth 80s pop music mm. and fair factory who are industrial metal mm. uh, heavy on c keyboards and samples it's two very diametrically opposed so i do like to think of myself as as uh, quite quite musically educated but <laughs> <clears throat> i don't know trap music so clearly i don't know shit <laughs> Yeah. and that's okay that's okay yeah. so have you have we found a yes, third artist yes, we yes, have yes. excellent okay. excellent this artist's name is okay i don't really know how to pronounce this properly okay so you know if you again if you editor rocky we'll throw a graphic up <laughs> we'll get the spelling as it's well it's called um his name is low file low file yeah okay and it's l-o-f-i-l-e or so l-o-p-h yeah double i l e Oh, okay. So it's lo- uh, essentially it's low fi. Yeah, pretty much. Low yeah, fi. okay. Low file. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, so low fi, but an audio file. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. actually really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's a really unique name. It's I, a name. Yeah. I bet Gallo Gallinifanakis. <laughs> What's a Gally, Gally Matthias. Gally, yeah, I was yeah. about to say the dinosaur Gallimimus, but uh, that's also wrong as well. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's a really cool reason behind that one. Yeah. And if you ever watch or listen to this, I apologise for butchering your name. <laughs> so those those would be your three artists yeah, to recommend. Three, yeah, yeah, very sure. cool. Um, definitely like niche, um, like not really heard of. Yep. Gary Matias is probably the most known. Okay, but, right. Um, so in, sort of in the genre, yeah, more stuff. widely respected. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yeah. More, for more sure, critically, for sure. critically, commercially well known. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely like on the softer side of music, right? Right. It's very, okay. It's very pulled back, very laid back. Um, is he you know, find a vibe and stick to it, guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. He is, cool. Yeah. All he, right. he. Um. I actually saw like a video of um a little bit about how he does like what he makes like how he oh makes how he creates yeah, yeah. and yeah. he he does really cool stuff so he'll get like a field recorder and he'll go out to the backyard or something and he'll go whack on like a, a like a water tank and it'll yep. make like okay. a dong and, yep. then, and then he'll take that put that in his computer and then he'll start pitching it and playing with it and then start making melodies out of it and then like out of nowhere he's just got a track and it's like whoa that's yeah that's almost a like in film that mm. would be called a sound designer yeah 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 um the guy yeah. ben burt who did all of the sound effects for star wars mm. um i gotta make sure i gotta make sure i get this right he got the sound of you know the the laser blasts mm. he got that by going up to a um a wire and putting a, a microphone close to it and hitting it with a spanner and going and just moving the spanner along so it goes yeah or like an electric fence or something like that but so the the guy's really a he's a sound designer that just happens to do music yeah but he's very well he he started off as a piano player right and then he kind of delved into a lot of theory there yeah so he's been playing piano he was playing piano like 10 plus years before he found electronic music and yeah eventually it turned and now he's doing it full time like living in LA like it's pretty crazy that's pretty cool but he's just so inspiring like everything he makes I'm just I'm with it you know I yeah. love it I love everything he makes um, and yeah he had this um, he did a little video where he he had like a like a box like a plastic box yeah of screws and bolts yeah and he would record put it in front of his field recorder grab the bolts and then like a bunch of them and then drop them in and it'll make like like a crushing sound like yeah yeah yeah. and then all of those sounds he had put into his productions and then like yeah and so that would create the i mean vibes and stuff so oh so i mean that's what is okay 
I don't even know how to start this question. <laughs> you're when you're doing music production and stuff like that, mm. you are obviously creating. Do you have what is your approach? Do, approach. And do you what software and bits oh, and pieces okay. do yeah, you yeah. use? Like, so do you do what Gally Minus does, or do you sit down and go, "I am feeling this at the moment," and then you kind of start organically from there? Yeah. So I'm uh, I'm feeling this at the moment. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, that type of person where I'll just and like it's it's linear. So everything I do, I'll make it in the one sitting. Yeah. And then um, just kind of see where it goes, how far I push it. And then, um, you know, and then eventually when I revisit it, I'll start, you know, pulling, picking bits out and yep. then finding, you know, fine tuning it. Um, but yeah, I use um, a program called FL Studio. Um, Is that Fruity Loops? Fruity Loops, yeah. Oh my God, it's the second person <laughs> I know still using Fruity Loops. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's like they've updated it so much that, because I was originally going to move to a program called Ableton, which is... I know Ableton. Yeah, it's more of like a standard, like, yeah. producer, electronic producer. Thing. Absolutely, it is. Um, but then FL Studio also is pretty staple as well. Um, and I was planning to move to Ableton, like, a couple of years ago, because um, I was kind of getting, like, a bit bored in FL and, like, getting all... This, like, um, I kind of wanted something fresh to, like, freshen up my vibe. Yeah. And then... Um, I decided against it because FL Studio brought out this new update, which had basically everything in Ableton that I wanted. Right, and so I was like, oh, yeah. I don't need a switch. I just, you know, I just yep. update. Um, and, and you're then, obviously comfortable with it. Yeah, as well. yeah. You know the like, interface like, yeah, and stuff. Inside and out, you know, yep. back, back my, you know, my hand. So that was just kind of like, now I'll just stick with it. I'll stay with it. You know, it's kind of working for me. Like, I might as well just keep going. Northland Artists Conversation is proud to support 116. 116 are located on Bank Street in Whangarei and are an amazing venue that uh, you can actually hire. Um, If you're looking to hold uh, an event or looking to hire a venue for a special occasion, uh, 116 on Bank Street are an absolutely fantastic place. Uh, You can simply uh, contact them via email off their website or through Facebook as well. Uh, 116 have had such amazing events in the past as the Whangarei Fringe Festival and they've also held the Plunge pop culture convention there as well. Um, They also have uh, local artists that also put performances on as well as incoming artists that come into the region as well and want to be able to do things like have plays or perform music or any of those sorts of cool things. 116 are also home to the amazing Beagle radio station as well which is a uh, local initiative that is all set up with um, some very, very talented people um, that actually love what they do, and they do it all for free. So it's very, very cool. So uh, 116 uh, on Bank Street, um, proudly um, supported by the Northland Artist Conversation. So I have a question for you. You've got these influences in your life that have been really important to you, Mm. and you've got these artists that still inspire you to this day. Uh, Gallimidas. Um, see, I got it right. I didn't say. <laughs> didn't. I didn't. I got it wrong. Yeah. I still got it. Gall- Gally Matthias. Gally Matthias. I yeah. said Gallimidas, didn't I? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And you, so you've got these artists like Gallifinakis yeah. and um, and uh, Low File. Fi? Fi? Low File? Low File? Audio yeah, File? Yeah, low low file. file. Yep. Yeah. And. Um, and they sort of drive you and motivate yeah. you. Now, if I was to search your music, yeah. A, what am I looking for? And B, <laughs> where am I looking for it? All right, so um, Enusta is my artist name. Boy, <laughs> you love these names. I've just dude. I've butchered half a dozen names in this podcast already. Yeah, let's can give I you please, another one to butcher. I, yeah, yeah. Th- thanks, man. Yeah, really welcome, appreciate man. this. You're so welcome. How? Okay, so how am I? Uh, Anusta. Yeah. How am I spelling Beautiful. it? I. Yes. Double N. Yes. U. S T A. Where does it come from? It's Estonian. Ooh. Yeah. What does it mean? It means inspire. I wouldn't have guessed it with yeah. the letter I. <laughs> well, or actually, there's like a another word as well, as encourage. But oh, yeah, you know, like same kind of, of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of cool. Encourage, inspire. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. 
I like a metal band called Meshuggah, and that's Hebrew for crazy person. So, very cool. I kind of like those obscure things. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. All right, Anusta. Yes. I said it right yeah. twice. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time so I don't forget Anusta. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind. You guys just laugh at me. That's fine. Um, now, where do I find Anusta music? Anusta music um, on pretty much every platform. Um, Even I MySpace. Not- That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Actually, no. Oh, it's interesting. Of- Bebo. No, no. Um, <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty much it. No. So um, I'm mostly active on Instagram. Okay, right. Um, which is at Inusta Music. Yes. And then I'd say like um, I upload the most onto SoundCloud after that. Okay. Like music, yep. Yep. Um, which is just Inusta. Inusta. Yep. And then Spotify as well. Inusta. So pretty much Inusta and everything else except for instagram which is Anusta music okay um are you a member of our instagram page the northern artist conversation one i think so okay i think i'm yeah uh, if, if when we finish if, yeah. just just have a quick check so if people want to find you and they go man what the hell was that dude a new endo guy yeah, yeah, yeah. um they, they can at least source you through our friends yeah. i'm guessing you yeah. can do that yeah so Anusta, um yeah. and how long have you been recording and sort of producing. putting stuff um, pro- sorry producing so i'd say and will it go back to the early s- stuff <laughs> roughly seven years okay right yep yep so coming up would be about eight years so that's going all the way back yep so that's when i first pretty much opened the computer and yep. started making cool yep. Eight years now. So yeah. How, as an artist, would you say that you've <clears throat> grown and changed over the period of time? Can you look back at that early stuff objectively and go, "Well, I know exactly where I was at this mm. point in time in my life." Yeah. I, I, it's not of, it may not be of a comparable quality, but we all go through a growth, right? Yeah. Can you look back at it objectively and go, "Yeah, for what it was, yeah. and like whatever limitations you had in terms of like." hardware and all those sorts of things can you look back at it objectively for sure for sure yeah it was like i'd say at the time like i I feel like i've always been an artist who makes stuff that's just not like goes against the grain right yeah so like and that's i guess that's like the hmm the main image that i want to well not image but like it's like authentic yeah know? sure so sure. that's like the vision that i've always had is just like you know because the main drive for making um the music that i do is because you know i've, I've always been someone who's been like <laughs> completely misunderstood right right yeah. and yep. all of that kind of energy i just put together and then that's what i make my music and so like you know from the outside looking in it's very like confusing because you know my personality is so like <laughs> contrasty right yeah yep, yep um yep. you know i love heavy music heavy electronic music but i also love a softer electronic music and then i'm kind of bringing them together mm-hmm. um you say heavy yeah. heavy electronic heavy uh, electronic like what yeah like you know the dub steps and the right okay drum and bass but like the real gritty stuff you know oh, i heard a genre called death step oh uh, there's only one band it was the 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 singer for a band called suicide silence mm. again they're a death core band they're pretty aggressive um yeah. yeah they created a genre called death step and it's i think the band is called the commissioner or something like that okay. that's just that's yeah, on that's, a whole other level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought Gabba <laughs> and stuff like that. Gabba, because mm. Gabba is a form of you know fast dance music. It's like yep. 180 something beats a minute. Like it's just slamming. Yeah. Okay, so you go from <clears throat> traditional drum and bass, which would be yep. the likes of. Um, we're talking like. Um, well, actually, more modern drum and bass is okay. my thing, though. Um. Because I wasn't really someone who, um, like, I'd say I got into drum and bass a little bit later. Right, okay. Yeah. So it was sort of, sort of a later discovery. Yeah, so kind of yeah. like, um, and like the more traditional stuff, I I didn't really 
I mean, to be honest, I don't really like it that much. Okay. Um, I just, I only prefer to listen to more of the, like, I guess, innovative sound. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just anything that's different yep. than what everyone else makes. Something right? like yourself. <laughs> yeah. A little bit outside of the norm. Yeah. 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 yeah just sure. goes against the grain. It's like, absolutely. You know, everyone's like, doing this, but I like normal. what's I'm, over there. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. way off uh, out here. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't deal with that. Yeah. Cool. Like, okay. Oh, you guys are cool down there. You know. Yeah. 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 Stick with your four four times <laughs> and your yeah exactly. and your verse chorus verse structure. Yeah. 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 For real. For real. Yeah. So that's kind of like yeah, but um, there's a couple artists that I really like um. One guy, his name is Amanu, which is yep. he's like pretty new, okay, um, fresh artist. Yep. And he he just released a new album like a week ago, and okay, it it explores a whole lot of other genres, mm-hmm. like not just drum and bass, but he's traditionally a drum and bass artist. Right. He started making the same genre and then kind of burst out and discovered some other and just other things and just, just kind of went off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um. Yeah. Whereas, like, I feel like my style is I'm just open, like I'm yeah. out there. So you've just yeah. been open right from the word go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so, and so when people like come across my music, it's like, oh, this song's like really chill. And you play the next song, and it's like, whoa, this is like heavy and like yeah. you know, energy. Yeah. And then the next song's like, oh, it's like laid back. You yeah. know. So it's like, and then I'm just, I'm just, you know, just doing me, just putting out what I want. You know, like not. Do yeah, you, not do you restricting put, myself. Yeah. Nowadays, do you put albums out, or is it just like an individual um, individual songs? Yeah, well, that's another that's another big topic. I think um, just growing as an electronic artist, like the the world of electronic is so like it's so open. It's yeah, like yeah. when you think about like Marvel and the multiverse, it's kind of like that. Oh yeah, it's super. Just yeah. there's a niche for everything everything yep. anything you can think of it someone's making it you know yeah um and so it's incredibly difficult to like get you know really make a difference right yeah. um and that's why I, th- I guess a lot of artists they would just you know they find it more comfortable to just make what other people are making and just keep sure you know, yeah stick yeah. to one thing because that's the fastest way you're going to grow to where you want you know yeah um yeah, from point A to point B, yeah, yeah. where the money is, is yeah, you've exactly. just got to get there as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's so what that's, a lot of artists and do. And that's what e- pretty much everyone is doing, yep. right? Um, whereas like someone like me, I'm just like, hmm. you know, I've always been an observer. I yep. always just watch what the trends are, watch what they do. But I never like partake of it because I'm like, nah, I just want to do my own thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I want to create my own, you know. And if just, you're very yeah. much feelings based and mm. very vibe orientated yeah, yeah. you know you might have something over here where it's like oh that's super interesting and nice i'm kind of not feeling that so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do something over here which is yeah. really obscure and different yeah 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 that's always been my vision yeah so sure. at the start we talked about how you as an artist are essentially finding your journey and mm. we talked about yeah. you know when we would get you on again and find out where you are yeah yeah what is your long-term strategy? Let's say five years. Five years. Because that'll years. make you, what, 32? Yeah. Which is still really young in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I mean, I'll have cracked 50, but 32 is still young. Yeah. So where would you say your <clears throat> five... What's your fo- What's the five-year goal? Do you even have one? Or are you going, <laughs> I'm just going to put out music? And yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm um, might, I might still be working at the same job, but with a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't have like a concrete plan. Right. And this is, and I'll tell you the reason why, because when I, I remember when I was like early stages, like I'd only been producing for about two years. Yeah. I planned out, I planned out right, my yep. next five years. Timelined right? everything. Yeah. I was like, yep. yeah, I want to do this by this, this by this, this by this. Yeah. And then Again, I, the Marvel yeah, Cinematic and then Universe. I didn't account, I didn't account for life. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> as a vision, like, you know, as <laughs> it's all in your brain, you just, you're just like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then when I got to the, like a couple of years later, I looked at my plan and I like hadn't even got to like the second step. Oh, wow. Where I thought I would be by that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, oh, like reality kind of hit me and i was like yeah just yeah. heartening exactly yeah yeah um i got really fixed on 
um, you know, because I had I had some people like like close to me, like some friends that I was inspired by that was like, oh, like what if I did what he did, and then maybe I'll be where he is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then it yeah. was like that type of thing. Like my mind would kind of go into that, and then be like, no, 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 no. Like, wait, I'm still I still want to be make a difference. I still want to be myself. Mm. Like, I don't want to you know copy. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, and so that was like a back and forth. It was like a, you know, war in my brain. Yeah. Like just warring with myself. Like, um, and so, yeah, just, um, oh, no, I'm blank. <laughs> it's all right. We're talking about five year goal. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you're not, ha- not yeah, necessarily not, yeah. having and one. Then, yeah. And so, um, yeah. So that was like a nine opening thing because I was like, wait, planning everything out like this it's so far my plans haven't been going the way that i thought it would be yeah yeah sure and so maybe i should take a step back and just kind of like do things in my own space like my own vibe yeah my own timing like maybe trying to keep to a plan is not the best thing because Mm -hmm. another thing was i was hitting like like hardware was like failing on me at at like a particular time when i was super inspired you know oh right right. and so yep. that was another thing that was like detriment like oh i'm not detrimental but you know like pain in the ass yeah it was like pissing me off because yep. there we go you know because like by that time i wanted to be this like this far ahead yep yep but oh no i got a roadblock now i have to wait a bit yeah and then it's like finances oh. don't allow exactly for the and then upgrades. and then i started yeah. and then i had to like internalize that and i was like oh you know like maybe um maybe planning isn't like the best idea Mm -hmm. and so what i did was i just kind of scrapped it yep and then just went for it in my own way okay and so that's kind of where i ended up and so now yes i'm at a point where i'm going to plan things Mm -hmm. in the future because i haven't quite planned it properly yes but i will plan it in a way where everything is open Okay. So, so let, you know what I mean? Let me ask you, okay. let me rephrase the question then. Yeah. What milestones or markers mm. do you want to hit? Okay, in five years' time? Sure. So, definitely an international show. Ooh, oh, like play with an international artist? No, no, no. Like, you go overseas internationally? Yeah. So, nice. A headline in a different country. That's probably. The, the biggest one yeah. that I want to hit in the next yeah. five years. I have your name on the marquee. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, cool. Because um, I've just recently um, opened for an international artist in Whangarei. <laughs> what? Yep. Uh, was it at the ledge? No, it was nope. at Butter Factory. Not, uh, that was last month, wasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. so this podcast is probably going to come out in October, November. Yeah. So in, this happened in August, eh? Yeah, this is in August. In August, yeah. Yeah, August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. So August 27th. Yes. Yeah. How did, how, how did that oh, feel? That was, that was unbelievable. Um, it was probably the best best night of my life. But I'll tell you the story because it yes. was like the best week of my life. Go for it. Um, Share it away. So, okay. So um, August 27th, I um, supported an artist called Bunchen and he's from the Netherlands. Okay. Um, and he's a drum and bass producer who's like super innovative, very young, um, very like, like just breaking out yeah. kind of in the verge. Yeah. Um, and like, I've been inspired by him. Like I've been listening to his music for like, you know, since he's, since I heard of him, which was like three years prior. Yeah. Um, and I've just loved everything he makes. And so getting to open for him and literally, um, shout out to low end crew cause they, they put me on for this. Um, and literally, like, they were setting up set times. Yep. So we have set times. And um, beyond the guy who was running it, he messaged me, like, a couple of hours before. He put the set times out. And he was like, oh, I'm going to give you the honors to bring him on stage. So no. I, I played just before him. Yeah. Wow. How many so, artists were there in the... So there's, um, there's normally four slots. Yep. Hour long. And um yeah so the original artist that we had on was um delarue mantha and me to support um bunchen oh i mean sorry no this gig bunchen was um marty which is a he's um 
Mighty DMB, who's a uh, DJ. Who's okay. Yep. yep. And then Delarue, which is um, Bjorn. He's the creator of Low End. Okay, yes. And yes. he's like a well-known producer, um, artist, DJ. Yep. Like, does it all um, in Whangarei. And, okay. um And then me. Um, and so it was like... Yeah, he, he misses me and he was like, well, I'm going to give you the honours to open for him. And I was like, well, like, that was a couple of hours before the show. And then just, like, it hit me. Like, I was, like, super nervous, like, yeah. super anxious. I was like, man, I didn't know what to do. Like, I had my set all planned out. Like, I was all good with yep. the, the music, like, my show. But um, actually just, like, knowing that I'm going to be, like, opening for this guy I've been listening to his music for so long like out of, man. The, out of the three local artists who mm. was kind of the more high profile or experienced um oh d- definitely delarue yep. and you were ahead i was yeah before ahead of delarue yeah, yeah wow yeah so That's it was a, a ego it's well <laughs> confidence it's like, oh my yeah, god yeah yeah it was like it was just super humbling like um i i you know coming from how do i explain this so um you know, I'd always been in the background. Shy, quiet, know. and introspective. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And, you know, I've literally just in the past, oh, like so this year, yep. like, you know, I had, I did, I played a basement show. Mm-hmm. And you actually played one? Yeah, yeah I played one. My yeah, man. This year. And that was cool. the first, like, my first time in a proper, like, club setup, yep. like, proper DJ setup. How'd you find it? Oh, uh, I was, like, nervous as hell. Yeah. And yeah. there's actually, there's actually um the recordings of it on YouTube. Yeah, right, yeah. Basement, basement have like an amazing YouTube channel. Okay, and, and we where can we find them on YouTube? Oh, then? just uh, basement NZ. Basement NZ. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Right, and that's now that's B A S S. Yep. M E N T, not B A S E M E N T. Right. Yep. Okay. And like there, they have that. It's an amazing channel with um just underground talent, DJs, producers, like all sorts. Just oh, just the whole culture. It's amazing. Yep. Um. And yeah, shout out Louis because he's the founder and he does it all himself. And he's just nice. One of one of our biggest inspiration, like locally inspirations. Yeah, one of your yeah, the yeah. national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of your national. Because like on top of running basement, he's actually a producer and DJ himself. Oh wow! And he's incredibly like amazing. He's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the goat, the goat. Anyway, um, back to your story. Yeah. So so Bunchen, um, the gig was like crazy, like so so cool um he came in a couple hours earlier to have dinner at butters yep and bjorn was setting up and he was like oh um this he was like told him like oh um anusta wants to like talk to you and stuff like would you hang out after the gig yeah and i was like oh yeah sick uh like this is what they were talking about and they're like yeah sweet and then he misses me and said oh he's gonna he's keen to like talk to you um and he'll come and watch your set because normally normally when international artists come they just come at their set time no, play their set and leave yep. you know it's it's never like yeah no yeah and so this was like a first that, yep. and so yeah um yeah he i <laughs> i don't know he was watching but he watched my entire set yeah and then a couple like on my last couple of songs i started freezing up because i saw him on the side you, of the you, stage you, yeah and i was oh like god, oh god he's watching no. yeah yeah but i can't and stare at I him the, and, and i remember i actually <laughs> i actually finished i actually finished my song a bit early yeah and he was like he didn't even put his usbs in yet and he was like oh bro play another song like i was like oh because it started going to the outro and I was yeah like, oh no and so i was like rushing to get one in <laughs> and yeah that was like oh that um yeah i don't know the feeling then like i was just yeah. racing and then you know i got to experience the set and it was like literally like 90 percent was original like it was inc- it was so sick um and then yeah after the set we went to the um the deck which mm-hmm. was like the little vip section yep and we just sat and talked and yeah it was like yeah, it's he, a fulfillment of a dream yeah, eh? it really is and like, that's one of those milestones you get to take yeah, off for sure for sure that was that was one like because it was my first international mm, yeah and it, and it was someone that i admired like quite highly yeah and getting to like actually like talk to him and you know pick at his brain and um, understand like his journey so far because where he is that's where i see myself in okay. a few years yeah nice right? so um you know and i got to ask them those type of questions you know yep um like what inspires him like what was his environment like and all of that and yeah like he just gave me wisdom and 
yeah it was like it was a beautiful experience um and then fast forward um a couple of days i went i did a like <laughs> spontaneous trip down to palmerston north to see another artist okay. Army, <laughs> yeah. called Imanu, which is yep. they toured together like the country together but um they had different um promoters so oh so different itineraries the different dates like yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. and so there was a clash um the night that we played here in Whangarei um Amani played in Auckland and I was wanting to go to that gig right but yeah, you yeah. know this opportunity came up and I was like you know oh, I was yeah, torn yeah yeah I was yeah. torn but I uh, I ended up just you know <laughs> rinsing what, myself dry like a nine hour drive yeah yeah rinsing myself dry and it was like the cheapest way it was just to drive down mm-hmm. um because flights at that time were way too expensive yep. especially like a couple of days before yeah you know it was super like yeah nah um i went down experienced that gig got to meet or oh, got to talk to bunshin again because you know we just had we to hang yeah yeah and then um i broke it my trip up home so i, I stopped in hamilton stayed with yes. a mate and then there was a gig there in Hamilton, um, which I went to as well. And I saw heaps of other DJ mates, a lot of basement friends too. Yep, nice, nice. Um, and then I broke it up again, went to Auckland, and there was another gig. And yeah, and then um, th- the funny thing was, the Saturday night, Bunjin played in Auckland. Um, but the next day, on the Sunday, when I went to go home, <laughs> this super like cool coincidence happened. Yeah. Um, I was driving, like just about to go into the motorway, in in um, in the middle of um, Auckland City, and as I stopped at a red light, he comes walking around the corner. No, and, like no, like this actually happened, right? Wow, and, yeah, that's crazy. And I wound down the window and I was like, "Yo!" Like you just said, like a quick hi bye. Yeah. And then I was like, "Man!" And then you know, he, I um, I like voice messaged him afterwards, voice memoed him when I was like, um, just stopped up the road. Yeah. And I was like, no way that just happened. Like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then he said the same thing back to me. He was like, oh man, that was really like, really nice coincidence. And so, yeah, I think that type of memory will, will stick with him. But also like for me, that was just like yeah, confirmation. Like this was my, you know, this is my destiny. Like I'm meant to be doing this, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that yeah. was like. Um. You know, I, I I love hearing stories about artists when they have, you know, those big milestone moments in their career. Mm-hmm. Um, I I had one. I've played the power station. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it, so when I was doing music, I had uh, three milestones. I or four. I had. Um, I wanted to make an album, like an actual physical album, one you could touch. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do a music video. Yeah. I wanted to play the power station. And I wanted to play an international support slot. Yeah. And we did all of those things in four years. Wow. So I was like, okay, cool. Sick. So that was, you know, so I completely get where you're coming from yeah. in terms of doing that international support because it is it is a huge thing. Yeah, it is. It's a massive. And you go, you know, we've clearly arrived at the next stage, mm. which is, you know, you go from being a, you know a sort of a, an artist and you go and do a few things and it's suddenly like oh someone international would like you to work with them yeah. and then you go through okay cool there's the next set of doors you go mm. through and you do that um so it completely makes sense now what have you got coming up because i mean as an artist you're obviously always looking to get yourself out there mm. and exposure and stuff like that yeah. have you got any gigs or any new music what's what's on the yeah. what's on the radar so um um, I have some gig, uh, two gigs coming up at the end of October. Okay, so um, 27th, or 28th, 28th and 29th? 29th, yep. yep. It's okay. a Friday and a Saturday, and yes. I'll, be, I'll be playing both nights. When, when, where may uh, people choose to partake of these gigs? <laughs> at the Butter Factory. If I'm gonna nice, um, nice. More, more international slots? or? Um, yes, but I can't announce it. Yet. Oh, why not? Why can't I get an exclusive? <laughs> I mean, look, but look. by the time this comes out, it's going to be yeah, pretty bloody close true. to the date anyway, so true. let's just say who it is. Let's get it out. No, I, I, can't, I shouldn't. I oh, I God damn it! See, I, I'm, I'm looking at my release dates board, and currently <laughs> you're going to slot in maybe the 20th or the 27th. Now, and that's not tw- of, of October. Yeah. Will the artist have been named at that point? Yeah. 
Okay, so. Okay. Is it going to be like, look, if it's someone like the Prodigy, no, no. then don't say anything because I won't be able to keep my mouth shut. I'll be um, like, oh, fucking Prodigy are coming to fun today. So um, it's their, um, they're a drum and bass duo from the UK. Yes. Called Annex. Annex? Yeah. A N N E X. A N N I X. A N N I X. Nice. Yep. Yep. So big, big name. That's on the Friday. Okay. And then Saturday is a gig um, with um, an artist from Auckland called Yancey. Yancey. Yeah, and he's an underground artist and one of my mates as well, and he's he's so sick. But um, it's like a Halloween do. So this is like. Oh yes, yeah, of course. Halloween's at night. Yep. Yeah. Of course. So yeah. Man. Yep. Yeah. It's Halloween themed, and yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll be on support for that as well. What are you dressing as? <laughs> I have no idea. Really? Yeah. Nothing at all. <laughs> I, know, I should plan something. You should. Yeah, yeah it's a month away. Remember? I know. <laughs> well, it's, it is the 29th today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Theoretically, you'd so, be on yeah. stage slamming it hard yeah, at this yeah, point, no, going, yeah. you know, I really wish, I really wish I'd picked a costume earlier. Yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> just take some devil horns and put them on my headphones. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll there be you go. Like, yeah. yeah. But cosplay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, those are pretty cool, man. So they're both at the butters. Yeah. Yep. What's the cost to get in? Um, usually the tickets are around twenty five dollars. That's reasonable. Um, tickets usually cheaper. The doors are um, a little dearer. Um, now where can I go if I want to get cheaper tickets? Because yeah, I'll be um, honest, oh, I don't want to pay so, door pricing. Yeah. On um, Facebook, go yes. to the Low End NZ Facebook. Low End NZ. Yeah, L O. Yep. End. E N D. Right. Yep. NZ yep. Facebook. If you cool. go onto the Facebook, they'll have the event pages up. Excellent. Both of them. They should have them up by then. Yeah. Um. Or Butter Factory. Go to their yes. Facebook page yes, as well. Yes. 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 Yep. And um. Check check out um the events there, and the ticket links will be in the mm-hmm. event pages. How many artists on each night? Um. There'll be four four artists. Four, four per night. Slots. Yep. Far out. And where are you gonna sit? Um. Well, in the mix. I'd, we don't know. Yep. We don't know. Far out. But. Yeah, so it'll be usually a couple, of, usually a couple of days before or a day before. Yeah. Sometimes on the day, it depends um, how Beyond's doing it, but yeah, we find out the set times. And yep. The set times are like just broken down the four hours. Yeah. Um, usually the international artist or the headline artist will be at the twelve o'clock slot. So they do so like right a twelve to one yep. type deal. Twelve to one, yep. and then a closing, and then two support before them. Okay. Yep. Right. So that's yep. usually the how it goes. Um, nice. And yeah, depending on how um Bjorn wants to run it um yeah I'll, i'm usually if i'm not bringing them on at 11 o'clock yeah i'm probably closing so i'm okay after them. right yeah yep. so okay it's, but it's it's easy though because um yeah i'm very like flexible I yeah play, i play yeah. multiple genres so yeah um you know i can play a bit chiller if he wants to start me or that yep. type of thing so yeah and it's good to have variety I think and dynamics especially in ele- yeah, especially dynamics in, as well especially in electronic yeah. yeah and that's one thing actually I want to touch on this that's one thing that I love about um, low end and like the northern um, electronic scene yes is it's very very um, broad and open minded like, yeah cool because you know I've experienced Auckland and it's um, it can be quite like rigid yeah um, structured kind of narrow yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I love about it here is it's very relaxed and open and like yeah. you know all the artists like all the main electronic artists in the region are multi-genre like we are more openly expressive right yeah we kind yeah. of pick things from different places yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and so it, I just want to say that's quite a yeah. difference like it's quite quite a unique thing yeah it's yeah. funny you've reminded me of uh, I've got a mate who is part of a, a duo down in Auckland called Bav Who okay Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Bav who? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's the Bav. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I reached out to him, I don't know, like six months ago, and he played me one of their, he sent me a link to the SoundCloud with one of their new tracks. I was yeah. like, this is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Really That's cool. Um, and any new music? Um, or is there, okay, if you don't have anything <laughs> being released, do you have anything you're working on? Yes, I do. Okay, so um, if you go onto my Instagram page. Instagram, yes. There's a post I posted on my birthday. Um, when, a, when was your birthday? 18th of August. Yeah. Okay. Just <laughs> hey, that's nine, nine days before you had your killer gig. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Booty. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. So yeah. That, anyway, that, anyway, anyway, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. So <laughs> Instagram. If you go onto Instagram, I did a post, and it was like a. It's kind of like a big post because um, I wrote out a lot of stuff about kind of like my journey, like my life journey and stuff. Yeah, sure. Because 
because when I turned that age, a whole lot of things had changed in my life, right? Yep. I've just been through a whole big transformation. And there's a post that I posted, and I'm going to start doing this annually every day on my birthday, like every time on my birthday. Yeah, sure. And basically, it's a whip reel. So there's six little clips, snippets of tunes that I'm working on. Oh. Yeah, and, and the first one is probably my next release but yeah um yeah so but there's gonna be a delay on any releases for a while because i've read another hardware <laughs> roadblock at the moment right isn't so, hardware I mean, <laughs> always a pain in the yeah, ass i mean yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely need to invest in better like gear because well yeah i mean w- uh, you know the podcast went through that mm. uh pain point as well i mean yeah. i remember editor rocky i'm sure you remember some of the struggles we went through with our hardware issues yeah. that were just ongoing. I'm getting the raised eyebrows. That's a yes. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, yeah. Look, hardware is just the bane of everyone's existence. I mean, in this studio is more money than I care to count. But, mm. you know, you just you have to keep investing. But then you, you've got to keep saving or yeah. putting yeah. things on high purchase. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, uh, my release is going to be a bit slow. Um, yep. I do have... Um, a collab with um, an, an Estonian artist, which is really cool. Oh, wow. Um, so our connection is really cool because he <laughs> he approached me um, like a few years ago. Yeah. Thinking I was Estonian. Oh, but because of the <laughs> name. Because of the name. The name, yeah. right. And, so, and then when we got talking, I was like, no, no, no. I need to explain that I'm actu- I actually live in New Zealand. Yeah. But I have Estonian blood. So that's why my name's estonian right yeah nice and yeah and then when he like realized that he was like oh like because because he's one of the very few artists in the country in estonia yeah that actually make electronic music oh wow um okay. yeah there's like there's literally like a handful of yep. people um and they're very like not known like it you know but he's one of the first that's like bringing oh, that's electronic cool. yeah, sound nice. to the forefront for his country and yeah i love that because that's so cool <laughs> but yeah um our connection is really special because it's like you know but yeah that'll be coming out pretty soon um so we've got the so the that, snippets in the instagram yeah, of like and your one songs. of the songs yeah. one of our collabs is actually in that oh don't yeah. tell us no no no, i won't <laughs> let us try and figure it out and for everyone that's <laughs> yeah. watching or listening um instagram anusta anusta, anusta music, music. Yeah. um if you can't find it through instagram uh search for it through north and artist conversation instagram yeah. um be well worth uh, having a bit of a sneaky listen to something yeah. that's not yet released. I think yeah, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tama, mate, um, how are you feeling? Yeah, all good, man. Yeah, all good. it's breezy, eh? Yeah, it was, it was really pretty cool. Um, yeah, thank man. you so much for coming in and sitting down with us uh, today. It's been super cool to hear your entire journey and sh- for sharing so many cool stories as well. Uh, I look forward to getting you back in. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a unspecified amount of time um and just seeing really where you're at and you know if you've hit any more milestones man yeah. super cool thank you so much for having me it's been sick as awesome bro Enjoy thank it. you yeah cheers well thank you very much uh for sticking around um and you know having watched or listened to the podcast really cool um yeah tama man interesting dude such a young age but he has just um really achieved some big milestones for for himself um as an as an as an artist as a musician um you know the i think the the thing that i liked about his conversation the most was that you could see as it went on he got more comfortable and I love it when it's like that with with different artists. Uh, it's just super cool to see, you know, some people, you know, they're a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious about sitting down and, and talking because it can be quite intimidating. You know, we've got um, three cameras, we've got lights, um, you know, we've got microphones and headphones and stuff like that. And um, I've got editor Rocky uh, here as well. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating, you know, so beforehand we'll often uh, have a conversation um and just talk in general so we kind of get to vibe things out but you know sometimes people get in the chair and they are a little bit a little bit tense a little bit nervous and um you gradually see them relax into things over time and look that was very much the case with tama tonight um super cool just a super cool dude um the electronic r&b uh i'm actually gonna listen to some of that stuff and try and check it out he's made some really good recommendations 
that we have in the podcast as well um, of artists to listen to. If you're a person that wants to discover new music, then um, yeah, some of his recommendations are actually are actually pretty cool, pretty spot on. So uh, the underlying question of all of this is uh, where can you find the podcast? Well, you can find us. I will again do my best to make you proud, Andrew. You can find us for our visuals on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube northland artist conversation uh for the audio um if you're if you're a person that likes to listen to a podcast while you you're doing stuff or going for a drive or at work um you can find us on spotify apple podcasts and google podcasts all northland artists conversation um we also have patreon as well um Patreon is the opportunity for you, the listener or viewer, to give a little bit more to the podcast than just a like, share, a subscribe, or a comment. Um, you uh, simply uh, log in, create an account, search for the North and Artist Conversation, and you'll get two options. First option is a cup of coffee, and that is $5 a month. And then the second option is, uh, I've affectionately called it, coffee addict and that's 20 bucks a month but with that you get a couple of extra bonuses that you don't normally get with the the other one uh we have had our first patron and i would very much like to send a huge heartfelt welcome to uh lauren roach um who became our first patron a few weeks ago uh it was super cool um and it's nice to get uh you know um someone logged in and signed up and joined up with us as well um that sort of support is absolutely amazing and i cannot thank you enough if you want your name shouted out as well simply log in and um go for the coffee addict um very good value and you're going to support something local as well that's really important is supporting um local artists doing local work um it's not that much at the end of the day and we try to put out really good quality content it's different every week and it's super cool you get to know and engage with people that are artists or discover artists in the area that you may not have heard of um so make sure you have a look at that it is www.patreon dot com slash north and artists conversation we'd, we'd love to we'd love to get some more people there that would be amazing so what's coming up um you know halloween's not going to be too far away um um am i doing anything for halloween this year normally my son and i we go trick-or-treating um he'll dress up as some kind of eh, you know the the usual you know cape and hood with the, the scary mask or the hockey mask looking like jason Voorhees. And he'll go down trick or treating. I don't. I don't know if we're doing that this year. We, you know, we've done it for quite a few years now. But um, also, um, Hearty Halloween is coming up as well. Putting on, uh, being put on by um, Northland Horror um, as well. Hopefully, uh, everything will kind of coincide and line up. This podcast may be bef- just before or just after the event. So I, I hope it kind of all, all lines up really well. But that's kind of about it. You know we're we're going along really nicely. We've uh, we've had the the next conversation go up. It'll be live now, um, and you know we're just going to continue to carry on. So I'm going to point to this camera. Transition to this camera. My name is Mark Kelly. There is the ghost of Andrew McKenzie. Thank you very much for checking out the North and Arts conversation, and we will see you guys real soon. Oh.